Hello and welcome to Anton Math. Now in this video we're going to be kind of kicking off uh, this is our first video in mathematical logic and before we get very deep into the subject uh, I need to cover our basis with you know some of the basic definitions and basic ideas that we use um, in mathematical logic and, and in this first one I'm going to talk about a proposition, what a proposition means. Now I've written a definition for you up here. It says a proposition is a statement that has a well-defined truth value which we denote true or false. So, you know, it, by statement we mean, you know, we're going to talk about logical statements later, but you can think of this for now as just a sentence, you know, a very basic, simple sentence that has uh, either a truth value or a false value. So let's, let's go over some examples just to make sure this is clear what we're talking about. Oh. Right. EG. So let's say I have some sentence, um, zombies are real. Right, now whether or not we actually know that they are, this is a proposition. This is a simple proposition, right, a simple proposition that's going to be a, a proposition that has just one kind of value, truth or false. This is a simple proposition, we can really break this down. And we know that either zombies are real or they're not real, right. This is a very well defined, very clear, um, that is going to have a truth value or a false value. Now, to give you kind of a counterexample to get an idea of what I'm not talking about, uh, let's say I had zombies are scary. Right now, zombies are scary. You know, I think probably generally accepted to be true. If if you were walking around the street and a zombie was walking towards you, you'd probably be scared. <clears throat> but let's just say, for the sake of argument, there's you know, uh, you know, Rambo's out there, and and he's not scared of no zombies, right? Um, this is called an opinion, and we're all very familiar with this, and in general, an opinion is never going to be a proposition. It doesn't have a well-defined truth value or false value, because the truth or false of it depends on who the speaker is, right? It doesn't have some universal truth to it. Um, so an opinion is an example of something that's not a proposition, right? This is not going to be what we're talking about. Uh, another example is anything that's a question. For example, you know, how are you? Right. The question, how are you, while very nice to hear, is not a proposition because it doesn't have a truth value or a false value. It has a spectrum of values. You could be ranging anywhere from very bad to very good, and none of those values are in any way relatable to being true or being false. Now, you know, alternatively, a statement, I am great, could be true or false. Okay. So this is also not a proposition. Right. So this is just to give us an idea. Zombies are real. This is a simple proposition. You know, it could be something like it is daytime, or it's two o'clock, or um, grass grows on the ground. You know, all of these are just simple facts, or they're not simple facts. Right? They're simple falsities, right? and that's what a proposition is. Now, these basic simple propositions, um, we can we can actually turn these into compound propositions with something called connectives. Connectives. Now we have lots of connectives in English, and these three connectives that I'm going to teach you in this video correspond very well to English. Uh, this first one is this little kind of tilde, kind of squiggly line, right? And sometimes people will just do a a line, or you know, I've I've seen something like this before, right? This means not. Okay, so let's let P be my statement zombies are real. And we'll usually use the letters P, Q, R um, to be our proposition letters. And you know, of course, this is just a variable for some proposition. And we use the letters P, Q, R and other letters just to simplify our writing. We don't have to write zombies are real every time we do this. So here's an example of not. If I have not P, that means zombies are not real. Okay, so pretty straightforward. Now we have two other connections, just like not, we have other words in English that we use, uh, particularly and and or. So we have this right here, this symbol, it's like a little teepee. This means and. 
and we have the opposite, this little kind of um, V, looks kind of like a capital V, this means OR. Okay. Now this, just to give you some little terminology, not P, we sometimes call this the negation of P. If I have something like P and Q, that's sometimes called the conjunction. And if I have this P or Q, right, where P and Q are both simple propositions, this is called a disjunction. Disjunction. And again, like I said here, um, not P. This would be called a negation. Okay, so I'm just going to give you a, a little kind of basic example of all of these. I'm going to go ahead and clear my board. Uh, we'll look at another board here real quick. Let's just say that my statement P is, my proposition P is the statement, it is daytime. And my proposition Q is the statement, it is raining. Okay, so using my conjunctions, or um, my connectives, sorry, I have this not P. This would be equivalent to the statement, it is not daytime. this P and Q, right, this is red P and Q, this would be it is daytime. And it is raining. And this P or Q, this would be red, it is daytime. or it is raining. Now, I need to make some clarification here with this last one, P or Q. Now this statement, P or Q, it is daytime or it is raining. This or is a mathematical or. Sometimes in English we use or to mean it's one of them or it's the other one, but it's not both of them. Now, in logic and mathematics, what OR means is it's the first one, or it's the second one, or it's both of them, right? So P or Q, this is the same thing as P or Q or P and Q, right? These are equivalent statements. And what I mean by that is, P or Q is going to be true anytime that P is true or Q is true. And that includes the case where they're both true, right? So if I was looking at this statement, P or Q, and I said to myself, well, I want to know if this compound proposition is true or false. Well, if I looked outside and it was daytime, I would already be done, right? I already know that P is true. So it does not matter if Q is true or not. Q can be true and this will still be true, or Q can be false and this will still be true. Or I could, you know, hear the rain hitting my roof and immediately know that this is true because it's raining. It doesn't matter whether it's daytime or not. It could be daytime or it could not be daytime. This would still be true, all right? And we're going to get into some of these compound truths in the next video. In the next video, we're going to talk about truth tables and how we use truth tables to compare different propositions and compound propositions. We'll see you there.